Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. How are you? Welcome from the east coast of the United States in New York City, New York. The city so nice they named it twice. We'll be here until midnight tonight. Uh, we're taking your calls and everything like that. But first of all, we got to ch- go out to, uh, let's see, Lake Oswego, Oregon. To talk to an ex. Ladies and gentlemen, that face you see before you is, uh, I always like to kid, an ex-wife. It's not kidding. It's true. It's true. Uh, it's true. In fact, you know, this Ronnie Bennett, by the way, I was just listening. Uh, I put it up online uh, because I thought people might be interested in hearing. It was an interview that I did at WPLJ, and you were there because you were referenced with uh, Stan Lee. Oh, I was going to bring that up, that he died this week. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, and uh, it was one of a couple of interviews we did. It's the only one that I have a copy of. And he reads Spider-Man to the kids out there in the radio oh, did audience. He? <laughs> yeah. And you, you, you come up because we mentioned... Um, we mentioned uh, uh, what was the what was the show you were on to tell the truth? Which one was it? The, yeah, to tell the truth. To yes. tell the truth. And he had been on it. As, oh, as, so did we talk about as, it? As, and, of course, as the real Stan Lee. Right. Uh, he said, we watched the show on television. My wife couldn't figure out which one was Stan Lee. Uh, and I said, I, then I talked about the fact that you had been on it as yeah. a fake dancer from Old Calcutta. And, uh, a fake nude dancer fake, from Old Calcutta. Fake Cal- nude dancer from Old Calcutta. <laughs> right. So we... Uh, uh, we, we and we, I got two votes. I know. And then he says to something like hey ronnie because you obviously were in the studio with us when the interview was done so yeah that was a long time ago and uh of the three of of the three of us one is dead so you know one's getting there very quickly (laughs) well well i'm not going to bring it up but we're all getting there you know I I mean, I'm getting sick and tired. I can't tell you how sick and tired I am. You better not die on me, and I'm going to tell you why. Because I'm sick and tired of everybody I know dying. Yeah, I know. It's hard to get old. You know, as you get older. That's one of the big things. Eventually, I mean, what was the story I heard about a guy used to go to his his high school reunion every year, and one year he went and he was the only guy there? (laughs) (laughs) You know, I used to get invitations every year, and this year would have been... 68, 78, 88, 98, 08, my 60th high school reunion, but nothing came this year. Really? Because yeah. I remember I went to one of yours with you. That's right. I forgot that. Yeah. Yes, you're right. And I, I commented on how interesting it was to be in a room in which all people within a pole, say a center pole, were six months difference in age from each other. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, and but they all look uh, and very they, and they ages. all they all look different ages. Yeah, that everybody ages differently, and that's, that's right. that was my great first great lesson in life. You know, <laughs> that, that that the good Lord isn't good to all of us. You know, it was funny that some I recognized and some I didn't know for. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the good Lord isn't good to all of us, and some of us He allows to buy facelifts. So you know, it's. Uh, uh, but it, it, you know, I uh, uh, that that was uh, quite an interesting evening that way, you know. Uh, but I never went. I went to one of mine, and then I I it was going to be on a boat uh, up near Petaluma somewhere uh, uh, along the river there something. Anyway, I drive up to the boat and I see the people getting on. It's like my thirtieth or fortieth, right? I think it's my fortieth. And these people are all walking onto it, and I'm, I'm looking at them, and I'm going, they're too old to be my classmates. Uh, uh, did you bring a mirror? And, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I just, I freaked out and turned around and went home. Oh, you didn't I, go at I, all? I didn't go at all. I told the oh, story oh, on the oh. air about how I just couldn't bring myself. Because number one. You went to Drake High School? Yeah. I, 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 
if it weren't on a boat, I might have done it. But on a boat, you're stuck with these people for two That's hours. Right. <laughs> you, you know, you can't go anywhere. You can't jump off the boat or whatever. So I made a decision, a conscious decision. I just, I, you know, I don't want to have to deal <laughs> deal with these people. Jeez, Alex, give me a break. <laughs> I'm not as old as they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, know. you didn't bring a mirror. Yeah, well, I mean, looking at them made me suddenly realize that, you know, I better go look at the mirror. Yeah. But, you know, so. Uh, it, it, and I went to one 10 years earlier. This was very funny. And I went, of course, Bennett Schwarzman, you know. And I'm going to, it was at a ranch somewhere, and I went. And it was, again, very interesting, uh, you know, because it was interesting to see uh, how people had aged and, and so on. And uh, Is that why we go to reunions, do you think? Because we want to see if somebody aged better or worse than we did. Well, actually, we <laughs> want to make sure, we want to hope that they all aged worse than we did, okay? <laughs> and uh, I... Uh, um, I went to this thing, and I'm talking with somebody, one of my classmates, Ben, and I'm Ben Schwarzman. has got it, got it on the little thing on my chest, you know. And all of a sudden, she looks at me and goes, "You're Alex Bennett." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, so she'd been listening to you on the radio, but yeah. didn't know that you were a classmate until that's, then, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So I was found out. I see. I've got a story for you, a very interesting story. Okay. Um, and toward the end, it involves you. As most things do, if they're good stories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Give me. <laughs> Jesus. Um, well, have you ever sent away for your DNA? Yes. Okay. Um, I wasn't interested. I'm just not interested. Look at my face. You know where I came from, you know? Um, and I and I don't have any. Well, how do we know by your face where you came from? Europe. Well, I mean, it's got to be it's Africa. It, Come on. It, no, it's not Africa, but neither am I. Um, so I just wasn't very interested. At least not at ninety nine dollars. But about a year ago, it all this place <laughs> were having a si sale for fifty nine or sixty nine dollars, and so I thought it was maybe worth that much. Yeah. And I signed up at one of them. Didn't read any of the information, you know, about privacy or anything like that. I just filled out the form and gave them my PayPal account or a credit card or something and um, and let it go. And about a month later, I get an email via the website yeah. from another person who's a member of the website. Mm hmm that says, apparently, you and I are closely related. 50%. Now, since my father is dead, yeah, uh, that could only be a child. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, you may or may not remember that I had a baby. Yeah. Very, very when. early, very early on. Yeah. 21, 22. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I had the baby, and when it was adopted after he was born, I had arranged that I would sign the papers without knowing the name. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody screwed up at the hospital, and the name was splashed. The parent's name was splashed all over the place. So that's not something you forget, right? So the person who signed that email was had that last name, so I knew it wasn't a mistake or whatever else it might be um and so there you are 55 years later and uh so you know i well, wait a minute. now now this person was what in relationship to you son son oh boy Oh, I didn't. Oh, did I leave out the important part? <laughs> Either that, or I wasn't paying attention. But I think, yeah, yeah. So, so this reader of yours is your son? Not a reader. It came from the website. Oh, oh I see. Okay, all right. The DNA I, website. I get those things too, where they send you and they say, you know, uh, the only one they got uh, got right so far was my cousin, who is my well, cousin. They keep telling me fifth cousins. I don't really care, you know. About fifth right. Cousins. I'm not having a family reunion anytime soon. Right. So, um, you know, so I didn't know quite what to say, but I answered in some manner, 
and we exchanged a few emails and some he had read my website and um and I I've got a whole timeline with pictures and stories that I told right. so he found out a lot about my family and we exchanged some of that information and then that started early this year and then comes spring if you remember over most of the spring I had two surgeries I was in the hospital twice for a week each and recovery yeah. afterwards for an internal bleed that was plaguing me and uh and I just let it go partially too because I was uncomfortable. I didn't know what to do about this. Um, and Yeah, I don't know what I would do. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's no rule book, you know? Yeah. And uh, so, and the only ones they ever show you on, on YouTube are people that have been trying to find each other for years and years and years. Well, <laughs> you, you know, I had, I had a son. Uh, I, I believe I had a son. At least it was asserted that I had a child that was given up for adoption, and I found out it was a son because I could read upside down, and I saw it on the doctor's desk. Uh, and and uh, I often wonder what happened to that son. I often wondered whether I should go looking for that son. And then I decided, no, if he wants to find me, that's what I should do. Because I don't want to suddenly jump into his life and say, here I am, Dad, and he goes, I was adopted, <laughs> you know, or some other traumatic uh, thing I like have that. very strong feelings that giving birth or fathering if you will yeah. a child has nothing to do with being a parent it, you right. have to take care of this kid and love them day in and day out no matter what they are or what you know however yeah. much they, they drive you crazy that makes you a parent right and uh so i think you're right about that but in my case it you know the son did come here so i just kind of dropped out of our communication for a long time and he's obviously been reading the blog all along so that when I announced this new cancer diagnosis about two weeks ago, I guess it was three weeks ago, um, I got an email from him again. And so we've spoken on the phone now twice at great length, two hours. And I really like him. Oh, <laughs> and, God. Yeah. And we're, um, there's, there's a lot of similarities. Some, it's just crazy you wouldn't believe they could be we both are big fans of Gore Vidal we've both read everything Gore Vidal ever wrote mm -hmm. um, we're both fans of time travel novels mm -hmm. um, there's what I, I don't know how you even talk about this very well but in talking with him on the phone I sense that our mindsets are similar that we think about things in a conversation the similar in a similar way mm -hmm. and we make similar kinds of connections when we're talking um and after the first couple of hours uh that we spoke i just for the next two or three days i i just felt such a warmth i can't say i feel motherly i'm, I'm no, not no, a mother no, I, I, never I, I know that. i know what you're probably talking about you know because i think i would have that same feeling if i finally met up with my son well, I don't know that I would if I didn't like him. <laughs> you know? Well, I've made certain determinations about mine, uh, and uh, uh, judging by certain things and so on, I have determined that he's Howard Stern. So, <laughs> <laughs> Is Howard Stern young enough to be your kid? Uh, not, uh, uh, well, I had the kid when I was 18, 19. So, God, we were stupid, weren't we, about where babies come from? So, you know, that would be 60 years old. He could be 60 years old. Howard's a little older than that, but I know it's not Howard. But uh, uh, I, you know, I often wondered what, you know, my kid would be an old man by now, okay? Well, you know, that's a funny thing, is that uh, Tom, his name is Tom Wark. Uh -huh. And, oh, and by the way, he lives in the Napa Valley. Mm -hmm. He is a wine expert. Yeah. He runs a blog for the wine industry. How old is he? 55. 55, yeah. And that's what I wanted to say, that that's pretty funny. Because if I read about John Smith in the paper 55, yeah. then I don't really think it exactly, but sort of in the back of my head, oh, he's getting old. And so it's really weird to have a kid who's 55. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. getting it. I now, wouldn't let me, let me ask you a couple of questions about this, though. Uh, because I knew you after you had had that kid, and you, you always talked about it. It was something that was weighing 
heavily on you. Really? I don't remember that. I don't yeah, recall. I mean, you. it was enough that you, you considered it a, a, a real blip in your life. and <laughs> Yeah, kind of. And, and uh, so, I mean, I knew it, and we talked, we'd talked about it on several occasions, and you seemed, I don't know what I felt you seemed, you were just, you were, always, you were it concerned you, okay? Well, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, um, so I kind of have a vested interest in this story. Uh, well, you even have a bigger vested interest. Uh, uh, well, I haven't told you yet. Oh, is there a surprise ending to this? Well, it's not an ending. It's just a little piece of information. Oh, okay. Well, let me finish first. Let me ask oh. you a couple of questions first before we lead to that. We may as well not ruin the big payoff here. Oh, it's not big, but it's oh, nice. Uh, yeah, it's nice. Uh, 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 did, you, uh, did you find out who raised him and things like that? Yes, and I knew that. when uh, The doctor who took care of me during yeah. that, um, and once I decided that the baby would be adopted, they gave me two or three choices of some people who wanted to adopt a baby. Yeah. And I said, don't tell me their names. But they gave me their particulars, you know, what, what their ages were, where they were from, what they did for a living, that sort of thing, whether there were other children adopted or otherwise. And, um, and however those decisions were made, I could have I made the choice. I could say no. Um, and I could say yes. And so um, the family... It took him. Um, I didn't know their name at that time, uh, but and I had made arrangements I, with whoever you talked to back then um, that when I had to sign the papers, the legal papers for him to be adopted when I was in the hospital, that they would not fill in the name. I didn't want to know the name. Yeah, uh, I was very young. And I didn't know if knowing the name or anything like that would make me change my mind. And these people had paid for all my medical expenses and right. all of that and had updates on my condition. And I didn't think it was fair for them to go through all that and me to change my mind at the last minute. Right. So uh, so I had arranged for that. They brought me the papers in the hospital. And they're right there on the paper. Yeah, the names big the... <laughs> name. <laughs> and it's not something you forget. You know? right. So if I had any question when I got that first email from yeah. him, um, if, that if it was real or not, which, you know, it's DNA, probably not a problem. It's probably real. Um, and the name was right there. I knew it was the same name, so it wasn't a mistake. Wow. Um, wow. So, you know... Another question you had? Well, no, that that was basically the question, you know. Oh. And, and ha how did he feel all these years about the fact that he was adopted? Did he, did he just kind of, did that affect him at all, or? He um, he loves his family. Yeah. I mean, they were really good parents. Yeah. Um, and he had a wonderful upbringing. He's very happy. Uh, and that means, I mean, I feel good about that because I made the choice, you know? Yeah. yeah you he had gave, a family. Yeah. Um, and uh, so here's just, you know, we were exchanging information. He'd found out a lot of information about me on the website and my family, which, as you know, was um, is pretty small, particularly compared to yours and all your relatives. Yeah. Um, but uh, but then, he was, you know, he was telling me more about himself. And he grew up, terribly important to him, apparently, listening to you when you were in San Francisco. Oh, geez, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> he was a big fan. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think now. Let's see, how many years ago is that? That was 19, uh, he had to listen to me anywhere between uh, 1980 and 1997. And he was born in 1963. He was born in 1963. So, I mean, he would have to have been kind of an adult, would I say? Um, 63. When did you start in San Francisco? Uh, 80. 80. So he would have been 17, 16, 17 yeah, when he started, yeah, if, if yeah. he started at the and beginning. Then he, and then he would be, start becoming an adult and probably kept listening to me and was a fan, you know. Yeah. Isn't that Son nice? Of a bitch. Well, you know, I mean, and he never associated anything with anything, right? No, 
had no reason to. Did he, ever make, it, did he ever make any attempt to find you in, in his lifetime before, uh, before this? I don't. Um, I think he would have mentioned it mm-hmm. by now. Yeah. If he had. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was obviously interested in his background by signing up with the DNA site. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and one of the important things about this, besides the curiosity yeah. and interest um, for, in situations similar to mine and yeah. his, um, is medical information as important. Yeah. And if you're adopted, you have no idea what your medical background, your family's medical background is. Right. So, you know, we exchanged a little of that. I mean, the important thing is everybody in my family dies of cancer. So, you know. Hey, I got, good, I got good news for you, kid. You're going to love right. your DNA report. <laughs> so anyway, that's my big story this week. But, and we're yeah. going to be talking some more. And the thing is, I really like him. I feel, and it's only you fun. you tell him if he's too. really good, he can meet Alex? Pardon me? <laughs> Did you tell him if he's really good, he'll introduce him to Alex? <laughs> um, and what, but what's really nice is that I feel... I don't feel motherly at all. I can't find a motherly bone in my body for anybody, but um, but I feel a connection of some kind. Well, no, what? No, you're not going to feel motherly because you never were a mother to this person, okay? Or anybody else. <laughs> but because you have a certain commonality, you're going to feel an affinity towards this person, and uh, I think it's wonderful. I think it's I just do. wonderful. I, I mean, do. if you were to put a period on your life, this completes something. Oh, you know, I hadn't thought of it that way. I yeah. think maybe you're right. It really yeah. completes certain a certain question mark you had in your life. And it was probably always lingering there. I know my kid still lingers with me every now and then, you know. Uh, uh, I uh, And as I said, at one point I was going to hire a detective to go find him. And then I said... <laughs> No, then I said... You oh, know, you don't have a name. See, I knew a name. If I, I, I don't have a name, to. but, you know, I, I knew a detective who said he could do it. He could f- figure it out. And then I decided not to do it. I decided that it was his job to find me, not my job to find him. Uh, and I'm sure if you've ever had that pang, you probably felt exactly the same thing, you know, that why jump into somebody's life when you've never been a part of it? You know, More than that, on the... I, you know, I never thought much about tracking him down, but if I did on rare occasions, it's more than that. And what in the world would I say? Are his parents still alive, by the way? No. No. Oh, okay. Because um, I would what, wonder how they would react to him talking to you. You know. Um, but I, but I, I had no idea what I would say. Tom made it very easy. Yeah. For me. When we first spoke on the phone and when we email, and and that opening line of a, you know, apparently you and I are closely related. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. <laughs> I mean, that made me laugh so much. I mean, I had to, I had to write back. Is he married? Does he have a family? He is married for the third time, and he has a four-year-old son. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. You know, it, and ha- apparently very happily married, it, and great little kid. It's, and um, it's very funny, but I actually met up or had contact with my the woman who had my kid. Uh, she wrote me a few years, uh, many years after, uh, <laughs> when I was working on the air in San Francisco, and she said, uh, uh, "This is uh, Sandy. That was her name." And uh, you remember when we used to hang out, Phil? And she named all the people we used to hang out with. But she never mentioned that she had a baby by me. In any of the letters that we, we communicated back and forth by, I think, I don't know if it was email in those days. I think, it, yeah, it could have been email. Uh, oh, that wasn't all that long ago then. Well, it was, lo- it was long enough ago that I think email was a pretty new thing. I don't, I'm trying to figure out how we were communicating. We weren't, did we talk on the phone? I don't remember that. But anyway. She was, I kept trying to drag out of her uh, facts about, like, you know, for her to say, (laughs) yeah, and then I remember we had the kid. But she never said that. And at one point, at one point, I think in a letter I wrote her, I said, well, you know, you were a very big influence on my life. And she writes back and she says, I don't know how. So I, 
always wonder what, what was that all about? You know, it was definitely her because she could name people we knew. Mm -hmm. But did she block it out? And then she started <laughs> writing about one son she had who was a trouble, was trouble to her, that he had all kinds of mental, he was always very depressed and, uh, and so on. And I'm thinking, that's my kid. She didn't give it up. And I, so I'm, I'm wondering, you know, to this day, finally I stopped dealing with her because I couldn't get her to say anything about, you know, I didn't want to just come out and say, remember you had a kid by me, <laughs> you know, in case maybe she but was. she didn't know at the time? She didn't say anything at the time? No, she, she never, ever said anything about that. But then she would talk about one of her kids, her oldest kid, who approximately fit within that window of when this kid was being, my kid was being born, like she hadn't given the kid up and at the last minute and raised it, and uh, the kid turned out to be uh, depressed. <laughs> really, and he, the way she described his depression and everything, I said, that's my kid. <laughs> you know, he's <laughs> fucked up just like me. <laughs> So. I don't think of you as depressed ever. Oh, I, yeah, I'm worried, hypochondriac, but that isn't depression. Oh, I'm, a de I'm, a, I'm depressed all the time too. Yeah, you know. <laughs> nothing, nothing's ever good enough, you know. So uh, there you are. Uh, you know, I've been a big failure in life, according to my way of thinking. You know, and everybody else goes, "Are you kidding?" You know, <clears throat> but, uh, but then again, I remember a story about Bing Crosby. And somebody talked to him once about the fact that he was the greatest singer in the world. And he says, I don't know why anybody listens to me singing. I can't understand it. He never thought of himself as being that big or that important. But why anybody would want to listen to him sing. And I'm thinking. Fortunately, they did <laughs> for his career. I can understand that because I think you don't under totally understand your impact yourself. Unless you have a complete ego like Trump, and then you think you overestimate your impact. But anyway, wow, that is a great story. That is just terrific. And with that, yes. I guess we should bring this to an end. But boy, what a, you know, as I say, it, it, you know, it, at this point in your life, that's a great resolution to have. A button on it. A button. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. Are you going to meet yes, up with it? Is. And the best thing is yeah. he's a really nice guy, and well, I really well, like him. Well, you did a good job of raising him. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> or I found him a couple of good parents. Yeah, you found him a couple of good parents. Are you going to get? Are you going to see him? I don't know. It hasn't come up. It hasn't come up. That's. No. Does he know your current situation? Sure. He's been reading the blog. God. He knows. It's, but it's great for him, too. You know? Yeah. God, I'm happy for both of you. That's good news. Yes. That's really good news. Hey, yes. Ronnie, let's do it again. See you next time. See you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, ex-wives keep cropping up. <laughs> Ronnie Bennett. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gavin. The Great American Broadcast Network. Ah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wait a minute. We're frozen. What do you know? This has been happening lately. Hold on a second, folks, because I got to fix this. So let me go back to that, and I'll uh, I'll go ahead and fix this. Okay, it'll take me just a second. I have no idea why that happens lately, but it happens. So you know what the hell? There we go. Are we okay now? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna be okay. All right, here we go. Ba Boom! Not frozen anymore. Ah, oh, God. I've, it's been one technical problem after another, okay? Uh, 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 for instance, a, a good example was last night, uh, I, I'm very tired tonight. And part of the reason I'm tired is because I, uh, I had a problem with my, uh, with my Roku channel, the TV version of the Roku channel, all right? Uh, and uh, I... Uh, uh, it, it always happens. These things always happen at like 2 o'clock in the morning when I'm ready to go to sleep. So I'd already taken two of my uh, my pills for the numbness of my feet, which make me drowsy. 
And all of a sudden, I'm trying to solve this problem, which is just terrible because certain things aren't showing up. And it's because I erased them all on the, on the server, and, oh, I'm just going crazy. And, and finally, I fix it. And about 3 o'clock, it's time to go to bed. I put my head on the pillow, and I just I can't go to sleep. So I then take it. It's something I haven't done in the longest time. I take a Xanax uh, to... Uh, uh, to put me to sleep, and that kind of doesn't do it. But then finally, I go to sleep, and now I wake up, and I've got the hangover for not only the the gabapentin, but I have the hangover from the Xanax. So what you're seeing tonight now is a guy who can't even remember his own name. That's how bad things are. So anyway, uh, our lines are open, uh, and uh, it's a feel-free night, uh, which is good uh, because it gives a lot of you a chance to get a word in edgewise. So. If you would, give me a call and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk with you. Uh, I thought that was a fascinating discussion with Ronnie uh, about finding her son. Uh, you know, she of course is, as you know, is at the terminal end of her life, and uh, it is so wonderful to know that that one of these little things un unresolved, you know has been resolved in finding her child, the child she gave up for adoption when, well, when I met her, she said she was 22 at the time, I guess. And right after that, I had met her. And she, uh, I remember her telling me the story, but as a way of a form of admission, I've got something to tell you. Because in those days, you know, having a kid when you weren't married was a big fucking deal, a very big deal. And uh, in her case, uh, I know how it affected her. I know how it affected me, okay, when it happened to me. Uh, and it's something that follows you really for the rest of your life. Uh, a, a time doesn't go by, I'd say, a, you know, a couple of months or a year or something, that I don't suddenly wonder, you know, where is that kid of mine? You know, my kid would be, what, about... about 60, I guess, 60 years old, uh, and uh, so that, that's, you know, uh, I don't even know if he's still alive, you know, it's one of those kind of things. Anyway, here's Tom Amaguchi, he's the first guy to call tonight, congratulations, you win the prize, I don't know what, but <laughs> see you have the General Magic t-shirt on. I do have the General Magic t-shirt. Hmm. They yeah, can, yeah. I haven't, I, seen the, haven't seen the documentary yet, but hope to sometime. What documentary? Les, I told you they, they made a documentary about the company. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, that hasn't been officially released. I guess it's been well, doing what, what, uh, what is the, different what, circuits. What is the premise of it? Because I would think the premise of it would be that that was one of the first PDAs I ever remember coming uh, happening. Uh they gave me one, as a matter of fact, and yeah. I've used it for quite a while. But because you didn't have a lot the Internet and a lot of other things, it didn't work quite as the PDAs do today. Yeah. Uh, PDA, by the way, as the term means personal desktop uh, or personal, well, personal digital, digital assistant. assistant. Right. And I think it preceded the Newton, didn't it? Um, I'm trying to think. Maybe not. Maybe the Newton came out first, but this had um, this had wireless connectivity. Right. right. It did connect to the internet. Yeah. But uh, but it was just you know too soon. You know it was just a uh, you know the company just went out of business. So this yeah. it's just talking about the rise and fall of this company that you know yeah. was just on the verge of of you know being great but never made it. Well, I mean, there are quite a few companies. Hi there, guys. Uh, we've been joined by Brian. Hello. We've been joined by Jeff. Hello. There are quite a few companies that uh, that I was associated with that didn't last very long. Hooked, which was a um, uh, right. online service. It was, you know, the, uh, uh, they took over the well. Huh? What was it called? Oh, 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 the well. God, that name. <laughs> I wasn't. I never joined the well. But the well, explain the well, because the well was kind of... The well was stood for the Whole Earth Electronic Link. Right. 
and it was a bulletin board system that was set up by the whole earth catalog people well actually wasn't it whole earth access the 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 stores that set it no, up no the stores had nothing to do oh, okay. with 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 whole earth catalog they just ripped off the name no no they didn't there was some association there if i remember correctly there yeah it was not uh oh. But anyway, yeah. But yeah, the whole Earth catalog, uh, and they uh, start getting into uh, computer communications, and and you know, so they came up with they came up with the board. well, which was basically it was like a bulletin board more than it was yeah. anything else. See, and you had moderators. You had had different chat rooms. You had different discussions. Right. right. It was all Unix based. Now, did it have email too? Yes, 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 you had did. email. You got yeah. an e I had an email cast the well. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong, but that in and of itself seems like an endangered species, the chat room. Uh why? I I don't see very many of them anymore. What do you mean? There's one running right now while we do this show. Yeah, well that's connected. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah, chat rooms Skype, are, chat rooms are still quite a bit around. Also forums are out there, which is kind of a form of chat room. But I remember like AOL. I'm thinking like the AOL days and right. chats and well, shit AOL, like that. AOL, just, AOL was a, you know, they, they went out of business because, uh, well, they are still in business, but they, <laughs> they are in business. They're a shell of their former self. They're a shell of what they were because they never, they were the, they were the last ones to go online. I mean, they, for the longest time, you went to AOL and you, you've got mail, you know, and you lived within this universe but you no. could never get out of it because there wasn't an on-ramp to the Internet. And they finally, after, and they got into it late, it finally put an on-ramp to the Internet, and it was very sloppy and very terrible. Uh, yeah. You know, but chat rooms, no, chat rooms are still, you know, I mean, people chat on this thing, like, you, sometimes they get just, like, chatty Cathy. They don't shut up. Yeah. Uh, okay. I guess I'm looking in the wrong directions so. then. Yeah, yeah. You're not you're not with it, Brian. Yeah. You're not with you're not <laughs> hep to the times. Uh hello. Yeah. Hello there, Mr. Alfano. Hello. What's hello. going on tonight? Uh, How's everybody? Uh, nothing hello. much is going on tonight. Just I was just uh, talking about the fact that I don't know what it ha what happens. But everything seems to go wrong technically about 2 o'clock in the morning. And, That's because nothing good happens after midnight. And then, and then you try to solve it. Well, and, I don't Uber and, and then that once you anymore. solve it, you want to go to bed. But you can't go to bed because you're still buzzing from having, to so having solved this problem. Uh, so I, uh, I am... Uh, I, was, I, I had took two gabapentin before this thing hit, and then I had to stay awake trying to solve it. And then when I tried to go to bed, I had to take a Xanax to put me to sleep on top of the gabapentin. So today, I'm, I don't even know who I am. <laughs> but, uh, and then, just before I came on here, all of a sudden, I'm send, trying to send email out, and it won't, it won't send email out on my, uh, my GabNet account. And I can't figure out why. It won't do it. It won't do it. Finally, I just rebooted my uh, mail, my mail yeah. system, and everything's fine now. You know, yeah. so yeah. yes, reboot yeah. fixes ninety nine percent of all problems. Yeah, but, that's why I'm afraid of electric cars because when you're going down the street at seventy, it's hard to reboot. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yes, yes, uh, Tom. Yeah, I noticed. I didn't get a email notification that when you were going on the air, so I went ahead, went to YouTube anyway. But I didn't get a. I every night I get a you know a, an email when you go on, and I just click on them. Link yeah. and uh, but it didn't get did I didn't receive it tonight. Uh, it's probably some problem with YouTube tonight. You know, who knows? I mean, we're we're out going out there, so I'm not. Oh, yeah, I mean, it that. just it just surprised me. I didn't because that's the reason to subscribe <laughs> is because if you're a subscriber, which why well, you got what seven or two people now? Uh, yeah, if you're a subscriber, you you'll get a, a an yes. email notification when you're on the air. Yeah, well, either that or some people will figure I, I I will get annoyed by getting an email notification whenever he's on the air. You know, but well, no, it does. Uh, usually, it says something, but you know, <laughs> don't rely on that either. Don't rely on anything. Everything associated with me in the last 24 hours broke. <laughs> you know? Do you ever have those days, by the way, Rob, where somehow 
you say finally I'm not going to touch anything because anything I touch breaks. Absolutely, it's like yeah. you have some negative energy in your body, and that's that's uh, that, especially in my last career when I was involved in, and responsible for systems that thousands of people <laughs> used. Yeah. When you have one of those days and you're like, I'm just not going to touch anything here. Right, right, right. Uh, forget it. Not touching All it. All things that you planned on doing, even the simplest things, you go, you know what? I'll wait till tomorrow. Well, yeah. guys, and Rob, you'll especially enjoy this analogy. It's like what uh, Tony Soprano said in the first season. I'm like King Midas in reverse. Everything I touch turns to shit. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it's just that there's some kind of negative energy that you get or something. I don't know. And that is, so you touch mm. something and it breaks. Like, and th so I had this thing last night and it, it, it was broken. And then today with the email, it was broken. And I can't think there were a couple of other things that I had to go around fixing, you know, so. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, hello there, Kevin. Been joined by Kevin, too. Boy, that's a nice crowd already we got here. Um, Good evening. Yes, I'm there. yes people, people, we, people we like. Uh, <laughs> hold on a second. I want to I wanna put up my, uh, the, uh, the logo here so that people can see who we are. Okay, there we go. Ah, yeah. See, when there are enough people and there's enough space in the picture, I can then put the logo up. Uh, so. well, I don't know about that, Alex. I've been making some deep, divisive uh, non-inroads in the uh, Facebook left-wing community. So, what, what, what do you mean by that? I uh, just, I'm, I'm not like uh, Ra Ra Shuskumbago, Hillary, corporatist Democrat bullshit, and I seems to, that seems to rub a lot of a lot of uh, left wingers oh, in mass the wrong way. Well, I got to tell you something about the left wingers kind of, for a second, okay? Uh, I, they're actually they're not left wingers; uh, they're liberals. Uh, liberals have a certain propensity towards uh, looking to be politically correct all the time. Yeah, and Social what, what I found about, but... is when I was on Sirius. Uh, I had serious reservations about Obama. I mean, I, I thought there were things he was doing badly. Uh, and I, I felt that, and I had said it many times, that we had elected a, an amateur. But he, you know, in all deference to him, what we have now. As, the, as, the, as the years went on, he became more professional. But in the beginning, I was very critical of him. Oh, I'm oh Sirius is getting letters. How can you have this guy on Sirius left? He's no liberal. You know, no, I'm no liberal. I'm a leftist. You fuck. You know, <clears throat> they couldn't. They they don't have uh, liberals. Do not have a sense of humor. Am I right about this, Rob? I agree with you. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. I'm, I don't consider myself a liberal. I'm not even sure where I fit in on the spectrum because. There are certain things that I just have a big problem with. I don't like any of the political correct correctness, quite frankly. Yeah, I think it's, it's over. It's and too much. Another thing. You, you another can't even. You I can't be a comedian. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to be a comedian anymore. Oh. And now, I wouldn't consider. My my idea of gun control is: uh, here's your license. Are you stable enough to own? Are you stable enough to own an Uzi? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> But you know you have to have insurance to carry that Uzi. Yeah, you have to pay more. Well, that that's one thing on I've, I've often said about, about guns. I think that everybody who owns a gun should have to have insurance. Yeah, but yeah. you know, people on the left, on the extreme left, they're oh, ban it all right, ban it out right. Like Archer says in that show Archer, that animated show Archer on FX, and my meme that I created. Do you want four more years of Trump? Because this is how you get four more years of Trump. How? By saying, "Oh, ban guns, take it out of their hands," and oh, you you made a you made a dirty joke. You, you, you know something? Though, you, you know something? I think I think with all the murders that have taken place in this country, mass murders, three hundred, I think three hundred and twenty of them since the first of the year in ma in murders that that caused the death of four or more people in each event. Okay, three hundred and twenty. I think America's getting a little sick of guns. I don't. You don't think I so? I don't think so. No, I don't think so at all. 
I don't think so at all. It's the, that's the, I mean, the wacky like, part. Do, do, I, I, I mean, how how, how can, how can the about? average American feel uh, the fact that he sends his kid to what used to be the safest place for them to go, their school, yeah. you know? And it's no longer a safe place any longer. Because they don't, they don't look at it as the guns being the problem. That They think of it as a mental health issue. Mm-hmm. And it's not the guns. And if you take the guns away, all you're doing is taking away your self-defense. Well, it's And obvious. only the bad guys will no, have the guns. It's, so, it, it's that, you know, that's why they don't, yeah. you know, they're not. Well, it's, well I it's, the it, term well-regulated militia. And I define a, mil- I define a militia. A mil- it could be a militia of one person. But if that one person is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, they, the government needs to have, uh, step in and say, uh, you you can't have that. You can't have this. Well, I'll tell you the one thing. Th- let th- you have a knife. The, the one thing we should uh, stop is uh, um, a um, is is uh, what do you call it? the uh, the people who are prosecuting crimes, murders, from being able to say, well, this person was perfectly sane and not allowing insanity defenses, because what you're saying is somebody who kills another human being is sane. Well, they were saying when they got the gun legally, and what happens happens after a while. No, no, but, you're never going to get, you're never going to rip guns out of people's hands. You know why? It's not going to be a utopia. Yeah, but they say, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, somebody uses an insanity defense, and immediately the prosecution is going, "Oh no, he's perfectly sane. No, he killed somebody. That's an act of insanity." Mm-hmm. Well, but you could have momentary, you could have momentary insanity. But, you know, the whole thing about guns, it's a, it's a very romantic thing in this country. It's how people – I know – everybody I know who's a gun person has guns from their young childhood, and it's something they bonded with their father on. And they are not giving up those guns. Yes, to me, gun control and is that, not – that's a perpetuating purpose. thing. It's well, a perpetuating uh, thing. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I never thought – America had a love affair with cars. Okay, but – Wait a minute. That, well, we hey, let's cars, let's pull this back cars. just a few. No, no, but I'm saying let's, that's changing. Let's pull this the, back a few inches. I understand what you're saying about the kid <laughs> whose father took him hunting when they were younger. Yes. And they had, it was a bonding experience for he yes. and dad. I understand that. And we're talking about guns now. I hate to use the word sport, <laughs> you know, because it's not very sporting for the animal. But, it, you know, uh, it, using it for sport and but then those people who want a gun because they think it protects them. There's a diff- There's a real difference between the two, you know. Uh, well, those, are, those are both things that are somewhat similar most times. Sometimes they work together. What are you going to do? Uh, yeah. It seems that most people, that you, at least most people I know, and I have lots of family and friends who carry guns. They all, they all, they love them, and they also believe that they are protection. How can you love something that's a cold piece of steel? I mean, it's, I can the think of nothing. Of it. I can think of nothing more loving than a gun. I, I can mean, think of three a three word answer to your question, Alex. I bet one frame of, them, I, uh, of reference. Frame and you of have reference? a different frame of reference than. A lot of a lot of Americans. Yes, Jeff. I don't, I don't think there's many people who who are interested in guns and violence. I agree with you. I agree with you. They're not interested in the violence part, but you're not going to get the guns away from them. But you know, I never... and the NRA feeds no, on that's that. That's another. You know, in, in in the United States, you not only can have guns. It's almost recommended. Well, the NRA, God, Rob, well, don't get me started on the NRA. <laughs> I used like, to say this joke was, I said I, when I went to Texas the first time, and I, in my car, and I drove to Texas, and we stopped at the Texas line, and the police said, "Do you have a gun?" I said, "No." They said, well, "Well, we'll give you one." <laughs> yeah, you're kidding me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, no, in, in Texas, in <laughs> Texas it was okay to carry a sidearm uh, as long as it was a sidearm, as long as it was holstered outside right. you. You know, words, you didn't have it hidden in your yeah. jacket. You could wear it on your hip. It was fine. They also had another law. This, this law was the best law of all when I was in Texas. It was against the law to carry a gun in your car. 
Now, that seems logical, doesn't it? But there was an exception, except if you're transporting it from one place to another. Well, gee. <laughs> <laughs> that was the caveat. Yeah, well, I was taking it home. I was taking it to work. I was taking it to McDonald's. <laughs> you know, I mean, ridiculous. It's like lunch. I was taking it to my daughter's recital. And <laughs> I and when it I, under your seat, but it had to be hanging in the gun rack in the window. <clears throat> I mean, I wish Scott were here tonight because he'd agree with me when I say that when I was uh, when I was living in Houston, uh, Monday morning, uh, the news that was coming in like crazy was how many people got killed in bars and so on over the weekend. And we just didn't even report them anymore because there were too many of them and it was too common. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a gun-toting state, man. Yes, uh, uh, first Brian and then Jeff. Okay. I'll use your words again, like you said to Rob. Let's bring this back a few inches again. And I'll say that uh, it's the kiss of death for the Democratic Party in large to say that I'm for gun prohibition rather than gun control, the way I'm defining it, the, right. with the parameters I'm defining it with. Right. I agree with you. Right. Uh, it's the kiss of death for them. Yes, it is. Yep. Because rational people who, you know, might vote a democratic way because of health care, because of if you try to take their guns, they're going to vote on the one issue. But I'm against the National Rifle Association for the same reasons why people like in history's past, people like uh, Martin Luther are against were against organized religion or more specifically the Catholic Church in name. Yeah, we, I have some of the same principles, some of the same beliefs of personal Second Amendment rights and ownership, but, you know, the, the NRA is just too wackadoodle yeah. uh, as an entity. Well, I tell you, we have one person in this crowd here who, in fact, is, uh, I guess, the, the overall umbrella term would be Quaker. Uh, and, and well, that, you and, want to put it Jeff first, right? Uh, oh, yeah, Jeff. Jeff. Oh, yeah. go ahead. Keep going. No, no, go ahead. Face your thought. I forgot what it was at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to start taking notes on this shit. I should, I, I should always go to you first because I, as an older person, I understand how fast that thought can be fleeting. You know. So I see in those debate programs, they're always writing notes down when they're opponents. Oh, yeah. are... now, I, now I remember. Now I remember when I when I was in high school. We had uh, the school. The school that we went to was a technical school in, in New York City, and. Uh, we had a, a gun club in high school. Wow. And guys would bring their, they weren't pistols. But you won't see that anymore. Like no, this. can you imagine this? Fuck and, no. And you, you'd bring your gun on the train. Wow. <laughs> okay. And, yep. you know, and you'd bring it there. And I don't know what the hell they did with them. They shot them or something. Who knows? Well, we didn't have a gun club. Crap. I was trying to think if we had a gun club in high school. No, we didn't. We had a camera club, but and you could yeah, shoot with those. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I don't. It, uh, 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 Kevin, you, were you brought up in the Bay Area? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, did you have a gun club at your school? I don't think we no. had. We didn't have gun clubs in California. No, but there really weren't any rules about not bringing guns then. But then again, we didn't. There have, wasn't a real deal then. then. But then again, we didn't have 4-H clubs either. Hmm. No. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> yeah. What is that, uh, Brian? I'm just saying, is it for argument's sake? That's my driver's license. That's my PA driver's license. It's also a CDL. It's a Class A CDL, and I'm and with endorsements. And I'm saying a similar argument should be made for that kind of template to be carried over into. Uh, Gun regulation. Yeah, but you see, control. they won't go for that because what they think is is that they don't want gun registration at they don't all. Want they any don't want any control, fact. and that's just too yeah. that's too extreme. Yeah. And got... that's relatively new for the NRA because they used to be for sensible guidelines and rules. They were They're much just more like a lot of those religious yeah. organizations used to abstain from making political commentary on the TV. Rob, but, well, well know, the, like, Trump made that possible. He, he well, Ray, I thought Reagan did. Oh, uh, Trump, uh, Trump, Will and Pat Robertson and whatnot coming Trump. on. And a couple of months after he oh, was elected, Nixon, had, Southern strategy. Well, maybe, but I know that Trump had a, had some sort of a. Uh, he had all the religious people mm -hmm. in the Rose Garden, and he made some yeah. sort of mm -hmm. declaration he about a steroidal boost. I'll give you that. 
gave yes, them uh, some sort of recommendation about allowing them to either um, speak out politically or something <clears throat> like that. Uh, Tom. Well, what uh, Trump did, this was actually back to the campaign. He gathered the event, these, uh, well, well, I don't even call them evangelists, the, 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 these uh, religious right <clears throat> and uh, promised them that, uh, that he would uh, get rid of what he called what the, the so called Johnson Amendment. There you go. And the Johnson Amendment was when Lyndon Johnson was a senator, he had a rule put in that religious organizations could uh, take uh, take positions on they could they couldn't uh, take partisan uh, political positions, or they lose their uh, nonprofit status. And he promised them that he would change that. That they could. Uh, so far, he had they. Well, he has to he has to change the law. He, he's been right. able to do that. He can't anything, get anything Congress to Congress outside of of the of the tax cut. But well, he, uh, he he had that uh, he had them all in the after he became president. He had them all in the Rose Garden. Yeah, even before that's been his that's 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 his continual promise to them. Oh, so and that's why they supported him all along because he, because. He's giving them the goodies, or he's he's promising the good the goodies they want. They right. would just love to take, you know, like these mega churches, take, you know, all their all their money and start pumping it into political campaigns. They would just love to do that, and still, this money would mm -hmm. just continue to be tax free. By the way, we've been we've been joined by. Are you there, Vernon? Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay, you don't have your camera on. Or... No, I'm calling in on the phone because. Uh... I brought my laptop up to bed, and I can't get the laptop Skype to work, so oh. I figured I'd just call in. All right. That's fine. Jump in anytime you want to. Just yell out, Vernon, and then we'll know you need to talk. That would be your way of raising your hand. Um, but uh, you're a Quaker, right? Uh, basically, that's the overall term. Yeah, I, I left the Catholic Church, oh, in my teens, late teens, early 20s, and, yeah. and uh, first got involved with Quakers with my older brother. This was during mm -hmm. the Vietnam War, and um, then sort of drifted away, and then when I turned 40 and came out and was going through a lot of issues, I decided to get back into it again. So since 1990, I've been very, very involved and uh, yeah. really really satisfied with, with my participation in that. Yeah, uh, it, 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 are they called Quakers or are they called what's the... the... Well, that's the the, 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 the the actual name of the, of, the, of the religion is the Society of Friends, the Religious Society of Friends. Oh, okay. It got the name Quakers is because, you know, when people were, you know, moved to speak, they would get all shaky and all and so actually it was come up as a, a derisive term yeah that's what i thought that's what i thought quakers. and then the quaker says okay yeah we're quakers <laughs> where, where did you live when you when you first got interested in being a quaker san diego mm. <laughs> which is funny because i grew up in south jersey in like right near philadelphia and I grew up in the middle of Quaker country yeah, yeah. and fun. never got involved in, until until we moved 3,000 miles away. <laughs> well, you know, I'm a guy who's very much against guns, and yet uh, I was in the military, and uh, they we, we have to go through gun training, as you know, in the military. And I was designated a sharpshooter because I was so good at it. Uh, you know, but after that, I never touched a gun. You know, I had never had hey, a reason Tom? to. Yes. Hey, Tom, did, did you know that Daniel Boone's family were Quakers? Um, I think so. Yeah, actually, you know, interesting, uh, Annie Oakley. Did you know Annie Oakley was a Quaker? No. Yes. I knew neither were Quakers. I knew Nixon well, was a Quaker, but I didn't well, know. The reason I know Daniel Boone's uh, family is a Quaker <laughs> is because my fifth great-grandmother was Daniel Boone's older sister. Aha. Uh -huh. Really? So, so, so that they're related to Pat Boone. Uh, Pat I don't know about that. Boone family, yes. Is it the same? Bo is it the same Boone yeah. family? Yep. Yep, they're related. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Well, you know, anyway, uh, be that as it may. Uh, Being the old soul of music as I am, I don't find I don't find all of his music that bad. Like Moody River, for example. Did you hear the big news today? Well, what big news? There's always big news. If you listen oh, to with Trump, there's everything. If you watch what, any, the Melania of, has become president. No, if you watch, <laughs> <laughs> if you watch any of the uh, of the uh, of the news networks, uh, they all. Every minute of them have breaking news. Do you ever notice that? It always yeah. says breaking oh, yeah. news. I thought you were going to go with alert now. You know, I, I just, I just wonder Fox if there's it. ever real breaking news, how we're ever going to know. Yeah. You know. I, I, I noticed that lately. But here's some breaking news for you. In a, in a uh, what can we call it, a move of, of unanimity. Uh and I find this very hard to believe, but as you know, CNN is filing a lawsuit against the White House for Jim Acosta's mm -hmm. uh, uh, press credentials being withdrawn. And uh, so they've been joined by other people, including mm -hmm. Fox News. You sure? Fox News wow. has joined the suit against well, Trump. They're worried that a Democratic president might try something like that. That's sure. right. That's a good that's a good thought, but do you think maybe this is kind of the beginning of the end of that love affair between Fox and, and Trump? No. I think that's happening. Hmm? It's subtle, but it is happening. I think it is you know happening what? It, too. It, the brass sides with them, but on air, you still got Sean Hannity, you still got all the 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 regular oh, guys. You also have Shepard Smith. Yeah, these guys are all still coming out you know, against Acosta, it's it's the brass. It's it's the Fox uh, Fox uh, you know business yeah. that's coming out. The management that's coming out in favor of CNN on this. Well, as long as we're mentioning Sean Hannity and the like, a mm. uh, new poll was taken by Hollywood Reporter uh, about how much viewers trust TV news anchors. <laughs> Who do you think mm -hmm. they give the highest <laughs> marks for the most trusted man in television? It's uh, 32%. Wow, that's so low. Well, but who? 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 Al Roker. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> he's a weatherman. Nobody trusts him. I know. Him. That's what I mean. Yeah, you know? yeah but he's I a weatherman. Oh, and, oh and so people would say Al Roker. <laughs> yeah, no. uh, uh, uh you know, if you remember, the most trusted newsman in television at one time was Walter Cronkite. Everybody yeah. trusted Uncle Walter, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, but 32% uh, went to, are you ready for this, Lester Holt. Yeah, I thought he was I can't think of bigger taffy on television. That's probably why. Because he's, he's unpolitical. Yeah, that's, that's why. And at the end of every story, he has some kind of, like, supercilious comment. I always joke to girlfriend, I wonder what he's going to say about this. You know, some, some sweet story at the end of the news, because they always run taffy for three minutes at the end of the news. And, and then he comes back and goes, and our hearts go out to them. Or something like that. He's always <laughs> got a comment. Just shut the fuck up and say good night, you motherfucker. I never listen to that. And, and, and you watch Lester Holt, and it's like he stuck his tongue up your ass trying to get you to watch. Mm. You know? their, pro their goal today probably is just exactly that on the network news. It's only 30 minutes. They don't have time for the opinions and the pundits. So I, I, I would bet their goal is to try to stay as mainstream as possible well, they don't and not they, piss anybody they, they, they off. They don't tip their hat. Yeah. As to who or their hand as to who they uh, would politically align themselves with. I don't know if Lester Holt is a right winger or a left winger. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's the way news used to be. And, and you really it's can't. It's not news. You can't tell whether any of those other. Well, because they've got the most important thing about those newscasts is to sell pills. Because most of the advertising on them is nothing but pills. So you know who's watching the fucking things? Me. <laughs> Yeah, you know? I guarantee you one thing. I guarantee you that if Lester Holt ever tried to stick his tongue up my ass, he'd uh, he'd have a very shitty aftertaste. <laughs> okay, I, let's move along I, here on this upscale discussion I, 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 that we're having I'm here. Waiting for 
that. Uh, uh, he was followed by, are you ready for this? Hold on to your pants. Anderson Cooper. I was going to say Anderson Cooper is number one. Now, he has 29% indicating a lot of trust and 27% uh, say some placing Cooper well ahead of his cable competition. ABC's David Muir, he's the only one left of the three, and Robin Roberts are also fared well, both scoring 28 in the a lot category. Now, they also found out the 10 least trusted television news personalities. Mm -hmm. Who do you think is number one? Sean Hannity. You got it. Yeah. Who do you think is number two? Who's left? They got rid of Glenn Beck. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. You're thinking. Uh, you're, 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 Rachel Maddow? Number two Who? is Rachel Maddow. Yeah. Rachel Maddow. Yeah. As least trusted. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. And, and now, Don Le followed by Don Lemon. And finally, in fourth place, Mika Brzezinski. So, uh, um, yeah, Rachel Maddow, second you know, most You know untrusted. who I've found entertaining is Chris Matthews. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've, Hardball? Always, yeah, he's always been entertaining. I so know, here's, but here's, lately I've been watching him. He's been you, pretty you know entertaining. Who I lately. You know who I find entertaining? You're going to hate me for this, people, mm. is Glenn Beck. Ugh. I mean, no, I watch him. It, he's full of shit. <laughs> but he's... He's a good he's a good broadcaster. I mean, he yeah, I know. He's a, he, huh? I agree with you, but he's annoying. I know he's annoying, <laughs> but what I'm saying, but you know what I'm saying, he's a he's a very good communicator. Yes, he is. That's precisely what makes him so dangerous. You yes. know. Yes. Yes. You but know what I, annoys me about but, that? But oh. I also appreciated Limbaugh for many many years as being really yeah. a good communicator. I mean, as one broadcaster watching another broadcaster my feeling was hey you know uh, uh, looking at these various broadcasters i really think that rush limbaugh is you know is a good broadcaster i didn't agree with him he's full of shit maybe That's he's even true. dangerous but he was a good broadcaster for a long time i used to listen to him just to listen to him J just to listen to him yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. he's a shit spewer, but he's a highly skilled shit spewer. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, I was driving he, a truck and I had nothing but else he to used do. To so I put he, it over to him he, to keep me awake. He, he used to have a sense of humor about himself, which he doesn't mm -hmm. have any longer, and that's when he lost me. You know? Yes, uh, yes, uh, Rob. You know, my problem with that with that poll that you that you read about news people is that Americans put Lester Holt. And the, the network news anchor is on the traditional network newscast in the same poll with entertainers and commentators, which are yeah. not news people. That's right. why we have so – that's why there's this there's that confusion. confusion between yeah. what news is. I was watching CNN tonight and I was, I was watching uh, a little bit of Don Lemon's program. And I was thinking to myself, you know, they shouldn't be sitting on a desk set. They should be sitting on a set like The Tonight Show with a desk, a couple of chairs, in an interview rather than at an anchor desk where it looks like they're doing the news because they're not doing the news. Yeah. Give them a couch. Uh, they usually have a, round, right. they have a round table and they fit everybody yes. else around the round table. But rather it, it than looks like an anchor desk still. Yeah. They should separate it better yeah. Hold on a from what it is. My jockeys are creeping up. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Because Lester Holt doesn't belong in the same category with Rush Limbaugh or uh, Sean Hannity. Sean Hannity or, or whatever. Or, or any no, of those you're guys. Absolutely right. It's a network news anchor. It's not having personalities Mano. reading the news. Well, that's why when they mention David Muir, that's fine. You know, uh, he's over at ABC doing the evening news. Uh, and these are people you trust to read the news during, even during the day. Now, it used to be that during the day, the, the networks would, the cable networks would do newscasts, and then at night you had the commentators, and that was fine because you then had this, you know, this place where you put the shows that were infotainment. All right, but now they're all doing it. You mm -hmm. know, every Craig Melvin, every one of them. 
throughout the whole day are, huh, are all pundits. All, day. all pundits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, Jeff. Do you, do you read the New York Times still? Uh, not as much as I used to. Um, I, I, I mean, I, nah, I really don't. I, I get head, let me put it this way I get headlines from it and if it looks like a good article I will then punch it yeah. up and read it you know my wife reads it every day and I, you know she's one of the few people who still well I uh, think I think that I think older people have a tendency to do that I mean it it uh, it took me you're gonna get in, a, a you're bit, gonna get in trouble with Pam on that. No, one. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait a minute. It, it, no, hold on a second. It it took me a bit of an argument to get my wife to agree, <clears throat> because you know the New York Times. Have you seen what it costs every month now? A lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's like over fifty bucks, right? But I she wanted for what a month? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Newspaper crap. Fifty yep. bucks a month with yep. all the free news on on the internet. Oh wait a minute. So so I came to an accommodation exactly with her. We subscribed to the weekend, we, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And for it, we also get the digital. And that comes to $35 a month. Awesome. You know, so we cut back on our costs that way. But I mean, also because I just said, how much do you read the New York Times? She said, well, I read the digital. And I go, well, then that's all you need. You know, and if we don't have, if we can, you know, it would be 35 bucks for just the digital or 35 bucks if we got the weekend and the digital. So, you know, they throw in the digital for that. So uh, uh, we get the digital. So I, I, but I can't tell you the last time I really looked at the digital version of the New York Times. Mm -hmm. I think for me to spend 50 bucks a month, they'd have to give me a digital. Right up my, my ass. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> a subscription to a digital porn site. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, it, it, happy it, endings for all. The, the digital is, uh, you know, uh, but but uh, so I can't say that I really. Do you read the New York Times any longer, Jeff? No, I can't read very well anymore. You, you can't read very well anymore, or right because of a uh, stroke. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So uh, reading is a problem. So uh, I can listen to. What, what do you mean? You could you? How's reading a problem? Just the comprehension. Because of a stroke, I can read very slow. It's like I have to read each word by itself. Well, wow, you know that that's the if if someone had asked me, do people have strokes? Can they read? Well, I, some I, people I would can. go. Well, what yeah. does a stroke it's have to do? Pleasure. What does a stroke have to do with reading? It has to do with articulation, has to do with movement, things like that. But you know what? A printed page, words, but it does affect you, right? Yeah. Son a of a bitch. Yeah, it's called. I mean, they call it aphasia. Well, they have Braille. Maybe they can come up with something for people with strokes. <laughs> well, I mean, the best thing Like is, somebody standing in back of you yelling the news at you. Yeah. Well, that sometimes... Well, uh, there are applications. That opportunity. Yeah. There are applications like News Aloud, I think, and that'll, that'll actually either digitally and through a digital voice or Well, I'm, I'm sure, for instance, you can watch a television newscast and understand yeah, it and you know, deal with it. It's just, wow, well, I, didn't, I didn't realize that. that. Well, that's something I have to look forward to as well. Well, <laughs> hopefully you won't, uh, you won't have to take the kind of drugs that I was taking. Well, strokes and, uh, strokes yeah. and, uh, and uh, aneurysms are like heart attacks of the brain, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if well, I mean, like, today, you today, use your brain to read as much as you use your brain to uh, vocalize and process information other through other means. So the, it, it makes perfect sense. Back in, in the difference between, you know, getting hit by a ball and and you have somewhat of a damage yeah. problem because of that, it's the same kind of thing, except yeah. it was a bleeder in the brain. But they yeah, gave me a, they gave me this, yeah. you know, they gave me this gabapentin. And uh, I have to say that on a couple of days, I've 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 had problems with certain cognition, you know, like and today with the Xanax in me, I was trying to remember a pa very simple password I have for uh, 
for my remote <laughs> PC, and I couldn't remember it. Yeah. And I finally did. But, I mean, it was something that I never even think twice about typing in. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I don't know. The trouble is, you know, the trouble is, as you get older, doctors give you drugs that normally they wouldn't give to a young person. But they think, yeah, you're old. You're going to be, you probably don't remember things anyway. So, <laughs> let's give you a drug that makes you not remember things anyway. And uh, that does not make me happy, you know. I try to stay against doing those things. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah, take I don't anything. Take I mean, I, I have to take all kinds of medications every day. So why add additions? Well, it has helped my feet a bit. So, you know, I can't argue with it, you know. But yeah, it's, if it's uh, functional and, and it's, I'll say, mandatory for yeah. you, use it. But if it's not... Maybe you can say, nah, I think I'll wait another month. Well, it's working good, as sure as my name is, uh, 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 <clears throat> uh, you know what happens to me every now and then? Do, do you have this happen, Jeff? And I'm wondering if anybody else has Go this ahead. happen. It's you wake up and you can't remember what day it is. I used to be very good at when I woke up knowing what day it was. Yeah. It, it, I I pretty much still know the day, but but there's other things that I used to know. I used to have a lot of information. By the way, to the kids listening to the program right now, if there are any, uh, think of us as uh, <laughs> no, as, a, 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 as a prediction. No, actually, we have more people watching us right now than we're watching earlier before we got into this. But I just want to tell them that this is this is what you have to look forward to, kids. This is the future. This is the future. The, just, you know, I like, I like to think of myself <clears throat> as the Sacagawea of aging. <gasps> If anybody gets well, the that dead giveaway to remembering what day it is every yeah. time you wake up, but uh, is that it's always going to end in Y. Oh, OK. All right. All right. Uh, Brian, I in fact, uh, in fact, they're all More, gonna, they're all going to end in D.A.Y. D.A.Y. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. It's the first it's always a dead giveaway. Well, let's see here. This is Wednesday. I know it's Wednesday. Why? Because, because I we like you. Because I did a show <laughs> last night and the night before I didn't. So today is Wednesday. That's what your computer and phone are telling you. I thought it because it was Prince Spaghetti Day. Oh, well, that's a, 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 mm -hmm. oh boy, are you old? How about that reference? <laughs> How about Brian, that? Brian, any idea what I'm talking about there? <clears throat> No, no okay. But Jeff I think knows. Everybody else Jeff on the knows. panel knows. I you no, you want to know something? I, I would say. You that remember the commercials for the spaghetti company? The spaghetti. It's Wednesday. It's sprint. It's Prince Spaghetti Day. Yeah. No. What a, what a brilliant wow. marketing strategy. Right? Yeah. How many years later was that? That was in the '60s. Now was Prince lo local to New York? Those. What I'm wondering. Oh well, maybe. Because yeah. Kevin doesn't seem to remember it. Nope. No. Oh, it and, might have and been a neither, regional and neither pasta. Does Tom. Right How come I remember it though? I think Anthony! I remember. You, it might have been around the time when you were in New York. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, they used to, the kids, the Italian mother was yelling down the street, Anthony! And when, when, when Anthony's mother calls, it's Wednesday. That's it's Prince right. Spaghetti Day. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's yeah, an East yeah. Coast thing there. Must be, yeah. 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 Uh, we had a lot of East Coast things like, you, and I don't think the West Coast ever had Carvel. No? No. 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 I don't. Oh, so you missed all good Tom Carvel cartoons. Well, you uh, missed commercial. what you missed was Fudgy the Whale. Yeah. His own ocean. Huh? Yeah, no. He was here comes Tom Carvel and he's saying, and hey, it's this time of the year and uh, don't forget our favorite cake, Fudgy the Whale. <laughs> that just sounds wrong. I know. <laughs> yeah, not PC anymore, is it? Yeah, Fudgy the Whale. I'll, I got your Fudgy the Whale right here. He'd be very popular on Liberty Avenue in Pittsburgh. Yeah, and it, it, Tom Carvel, he's Castro a, in San Francisco. Oh, this old yeah, exactly. guy. He just got older and older, and he still kept doing the commercials. Yeah, he could barely speak anymore. Yeah. But please visit your participating Carvel ice cream store. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, also, uh, I don't know if you remember this, I, they were one of the sponsors of the Joe Franklin Show. Again, something nobody here knows except for oh, Rob Franklin. and I and Jeff. Uh, uh, he used to be sponsored by Martin Paint. Uh, 
Martin. It ain't just paint. Just paint. Yep. <laughs> I, well, there's a Martin supermarket here, and every time I go by it, I sing Martin Home Decorating Center. It ain't just, just paint. paint. Yeah. Well, the thing was, the thing was, wait a minute, it, it, it ain't just paint. Uh, they, they had a woman who was Miss Martin Paint every year. And, and she, this one woman who was Martin, Miss Martin Paint never could pronounce Martin. She pronounced it Martin. <laughs> it's Martin. like the commercial Martin. I see all the time for, for a car dealership in Newton. They oh, won't really? say Newton. Oh, Newton. You, you want to know the one's driving me nuts now? There's a guy with a casino that does online betting. And he says, are you ready for this? And we have our live dealers broadcasted live. Broadcasted. <laughs> now, I've been wanting to write this guy and say, listen, you fucking moron. There is no such word as broadcasted. Yeah. It's broadcast live. And if that guy were me with my personality, I'd fire right back and say, well, there is now, shitbird. You well, no, you know what the problem is. People who do that, it gets it, it seeps into the English language, and then well, other people do it. Language and other always people. evolves, though, Alex. No, we it don't speak no. like we don't speak like no. our ancestors no. said in the no. 1800s. No, that's true. This, this isn't an evolution. This is a right. de-evolution. So says you and your subjective opinion. It's, it's a oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. Yes, hey, so Alex. Wait, wait, but Tom has his hand up. Yeah, he does. Yeah, so we get the story out quickly because we've been joined by Dubai, it looks like. Um, but anyway, uh, when I was a teenager in San Diego, I used to listen to the, to the morning radio, and there was a guy, you know, one of those car dealers who did his own commercials, and his, his car dealership was City Chevrolet. The problem yeah. was he had a problem... <laughs> Pronouncing the C's and that CH's, and he slurred it, and he said, "Now come on down to shitty Chevrolet." <laughs> <laughs> and every time, every time I heard that, I just funny. cracked up. <laughs> it makes you remember. Yeah. Hello there, uh, 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 Bree. How are you? Hello, Alex and the crew. How are you? Yeah. Uh, well, why don't we ever see your camera? Hello. Because you're, you had your camera on last night for a cameo. Right. Well, I, I just wake up. So, you know, I yeah. need a few minutes to compose myself. How, how's the weather there today? Sunny with a chance of, of sandstorms? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's very nice now. We get, uh, it'll be between 70 and 80 degrees every day with... Uh, we did have a little rain and wind uh, mm -hmm. the other day. There was a concert going on nearby, and they had to uh, they had to cancel. It. I mean, everybody was there and everything, and they had to tell them, "Hey, go home," because there was actually lightning and wind. And uh, but it was just for one day, and I think it's because they do cloud seeding, so they okay they get a little bit. Oh, by the way, for the people who live in the Bay Area. Okay, we got one for you. This is cur oh. courtesy of Forbin Colossus on our chat room, which still works, Brian. Uh, it yes. says, Alex, San Franciscoism is Matthews TV, 6400 Mission Boulevard, top of the hill, Daily City. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. other one was Ellis Brooks. Ellis Brooks oh. Chevrolet. Yeah, with, with, uh, with Dinah Shore singing the Ellis yeah, Brooks Chevrolet. Yeah, see the Chevrolet. world today. Yeah, at I mean, Ellis Brooks Chevrolet corner of was it Bush and Van Ness? Bush and Van Ness. Yeah, that was Automobile yeah. Row there. But anyway, no, it was it was actually it was uh, this is uh, Matthews at uh, and they didn't say Matthews TV. They just said come see our uh, something. Yeah, Matthews TV and stereo, top T of the hill, Daily City. Top of the hill, Daily City. Right. And you go to the top of the hill in mm. Daly City, which wasn't very high because there weren't many yeah. hills in Daly City. It was that big dip they had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. There at Westlake. Yes, Tom. We uh, got our first VCR there at uh, Matthews. And a part of the deal is we got a uh, subscription to Captain Video. Oh, that's right. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Fr friend of mine owned Captain Video. Yeah. What, what do you mean owned it? 
Well, Captain, no, Captain Video was a store in San Francisco. The, for one oh, of the, one of the, I thought you meant the TV uh, show. Uh, just about a, the first she, rental place for video. Yeah. Yeah, was, uh, yeah, that was, uh, they uh, was one of the original ones, yeah. They also had a store in Albany. Later on, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought you were talking about the old-time TV. That may have been a New York-based show, the old-time TV show that's referenced on the Honeymooners. The Visual Space Humanano, Captain Video. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Video and the Video Rangers. <laughs> right, right. Come on, Ellis. Norton. Yeah, well, that was a TV show, but out, in, out, out there we <laughs> also had Captain Video was the video store. And uh, it was on, uh, what was it? Uh, what's the street? What's the uh, Lombard? Right, uh, and the marina was the first uh, first store, and uh, that was the days when they uh, when they were renting, trying to rent video. What they did was they would go out and buy the new videos, right, and then they would just stock their stores with them and then rent them to you. Well, all of a sudden, the companies got really pissy about it and said, "How come you're making all this money and we're not? You know, you're yeah. buying the tapes for like twenty nine bucks and you're making." hundreds out of each tape, you know, before they wear out. And so they decided you couldn't be, you couldn't have them unless it was an authorized tape from the company. And they colored them, if you remember, red. Yeah. They were red and they used to sell them to people like Captain Video for like two hundred dollars a piece. Is what yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. And if you got a hold of one, you're in trouble. Exactly. But that didn't last very long because people no. just said, fuck you, we're still selling the old stuff. Yes, uh, yes, Tom. Well, I remember that actually the, the video rental market just started because they were charging so much for the, t the t tapes uh, retail. Right. Like they were charging like, what, 89 bucks or something like that to buy a videotape. Yeah. And so so naturally people were, they were going to, why, why go buy a tape that, you're only going to watch the movie maybe once or twice. Might as well just rent it. Do you know where I lost the most money in my life, though? Laserdiscs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would buy Laserdiscs, and they were 34 bucks a piece. Wow. And, I, and they were heavy. When, and when I finally left San Francisco, <clears throat> I just, I, I think I sold them to somebody for next to nothing. Because it only lasted like six this. months, didn't they? The, the whole huh? laser disc thing was oh, only about oh, no, eight no, hours. No, no, laser disc lasted for quite a while. It was the best technology of that day. And then DVD came, and that came to an end because who wanted a big disc that turned yeah. itself over? You had to yeah. turn it over every, yeah, every yeah. hour. Alex, you know that the. Uh... The video game Dragon's Lair. Dragon's Lair. Was, Dragon's Lair. Right. Yeah. Remember that? Yep. That was run by Laserdisc. Yes. It's one, I hear it's one of only three games that's in the Smithsonian, along with Pong and uh, Pac-Man. Yeah, it was one of the first v video games, and it was played on a Laserdisc machine in the arcade machine. And uh, would go to it could go to various parts of it depending on what you decided to do. It was a little on the clumsy, and it, but oh, and it, they got a big animator to animate it as well. So it was a it was a classic. I know some. Yeah, Don people, Bluth. Yeah, Don Hi, Bluth. Man. That's exactly who did it. Yes. American Tail, former Disney animator. Yeah. Five all that yeah. shit. Well, he also did. Then they also do a uh, Space Ace. Uh, I think I don't remember. But uh, 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 you know, uh, really, quite a, uh, quite a, uh, um, uh, uh, an advance there. I'm glad you remember Dragon's Lair. Uh, but uh, uh, it, 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 it was, you know, it, it, the the selling or the renting of videotapes was a big was a big business for years. It lasted quite a long time until, and then DVDs came along. And the thing was, I think with DVDs is they were so cheap that you didn't mind buying them. You know? Uh, Do you know that there's still a blockbuster? The last blockbuster is in Bend, Oregon. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's right. I went by it last, last in July when I was up there. And there's there was one in Alaska and it closed down. Yeah. They have a beer up there in the, one of the breweries. That's the last, they call it the last... Uh, the last blockbuster beer or something. 
Do you know that Netflix still will mail you DVDs? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They they tried to close that business down saying, hey, that's just not what we're doing for a living these days. And there was such a hue and cry about it. There's still you, people who well, go If Larry Bubbles Brown still has dial-up. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably was one of the wrote. Yeah, well, is he, it just uh, movies that they'll rent you that way, or will they rent you the TV shows that way, too? Uh, they, they will rent you... Um, Oh, you mean their TV shows? Yeah. No. Is it no. like just it's, Netflix it's, movies? It's the movies. Or is it it's the just movies. movies. It's movies, yeah. If you got to ask Larry Bubbles Brown, is he still getting Netflix through the mail? I don't know if he, he ever got a DVD machine for crying <laughs> out loud. <laughs> I'll ask him next time I talk to him, do you have I a DVD machine? got four in the machine? garage you can have. Yeah, doesn't he, have one of those, doesn't he have one of those machines he's that he puts his eyes up to and goes like this? He's a kinescope. He has a such a, he has such an aversion to technology. I have sitting over here a uh, iPhone 6s, which is a pretty good phone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got I told one. him it's yours if mm -hmm. you just go out and get yourself signed up to something so that we can get an internet into it. Like AT, you have to call AT&T, find out how much they're gonna charge. If you wanna pay that, I will give you, I'll mail this to you for free. And- Is it a plus? He's, yeah. And he- 6S plus? A, a, a 6S plus, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, and I said, uh, he, I, and, and he, he's yet to make the call. He says, I have a friend who works over at blah, blah, blah. And I'm going, Larry, you don't want to do it, do you? You know? <laughs> well, you know, he says, uh, I don't know if I know how to operate it. Yeah, he's got him. a fucking, he's gotten along without it. he's got a flip phone. That's all he needs. <laughs> My, and my, if he uh, wants to, send, if he wants to send a text, here, give it to if him. he wants to hit, send a text and send the letter C, he has to hit the A button three times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That's more complicated. You know, by the time you said, you know, send help, you were dead. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's the wonderful world, ladies and gentlemen, of, of, of technology and how it's improved. I don't know if it's improved. You know, I mean, they keep coming up with new stuff, but I mean, I've got, a, I've got one of the first uh, iPhones here, and I imagine it still works and probably has most of the stuff I need in it. Uh, although I don't know if you could send texts with those at that point. With the original iPhones, you yeah, could. You could? Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, they're ten cents each. I just ordered my Yoda phone three. I have to wait for it to. I have to wait for it to come in from China. But I had this Yoda phone too. Uh, if you remember, what's a Yoda? Wait, what, wait, what's a Yoda phone? It's a good well, Yoda. A good phone Yoda's, it is. A what? It's a Greek word. Greek word for I. Greek letter I. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Make so, a call, you will. Uh, <laughs> right. This is the one that has the e-ink screen on the back. What do you mean the e-ink screen? It has a front LCD screen, and yeah. then on the back it has an e-reader, e-ink screen. And I do a lot of reading on my phone. Oh, like, I, I have see. Okay. Times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a good idea. Do yeah, the phones just... do the phones in Dubai support e-sims? Uh, I think they're talking about that, but I'm not sure if it's actually here or not. Uh, I do know we have um, drone police officers on drone motorbikes. Yeah, they fly in the air. I just saw one yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I saw that. I saw that tonight on yeah. the news. Yes, it's a yeah. it's, it's a like drone Blade Runner shit right there. It's a drone motorcycle. Yeah. It 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 floats uh, 16 feet off the ground. 150 grand. 150 grand. Yeah, uh, actually, it just came on the uh, Echo Show. I just saw the, <laughs> I just saw the, as you said that, Alex, it just popped up. Yeah, and and I think it uh, it it holds a charge for about three minutes, and then down you go. <laughs> down you go. <laughs> well, no, regardless of who's below you. Right, right. Uh, uh, 
No, but I mean it. 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 Uh, that's a. a yeah. That, there's that. Uh, gosh, life. You know, I, is life getting better because of all of this? No. No. You know, I mean, I'm not hesitating yeah. for a minute to answer your question. No, it isn't. I mean, as long as the upper tier wants more of us, wants more from us, from the bottom tier. Yeah. At the expense of our health, and well-being. No, it's getting worse. Yeah, I mean, I just remember that when you made a, a, a call outside, you had to put a quarter in the machine or a dime or whatever in the in the phone booth, you know? It's yeah, but during those days when you had a high school education, you were much more likely to find a job that would pay a wage, that would put a roof over your head and food, food on the table for a family of four. Oh, I you were one of the kids that took shop. <laughs> yeah. Well, still. Yeah, but... Uh, mm -hmm. Alex, did you see this report in Ireland of uh, airplanes reporting mysterious lights? Uh, no. Yeah, UFO sightings. You know, that, those things are so hard. I, You know, I don't want to jump on the bandwagon right away, but I don't know how you explain those. I listened to the audio of that. Well, they are explainable. Something... Wait a minute. They are explainable. <laughs> Uh, it, it's just that everybody wants to say, oh, you know, to begin with, I've often felt the idea of UFOs visiting our world as a virtual, almost a virtual impossibility, because if you think about the chances, considering how many stars there are in the universe, how many planets there are in the universe, that somehow we're so fucking interesting that they're heading well, here. You know. It might it might be more about it's a friendly planet in terms of um, survival to them. It but, may not be as random no, as you but think. They, but they may survive on a methane air. You know, they may have an entirely different, uh, you know, because, you know, we do have things on this planet. I mean, you want to find aliens. Just go down into the ocean. Just go into the White House. There, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are things down in the ocean. Stirred up enough shit. Maybe they want to come see what we're doing. There are things down in the ocean that would just floor you. Yeah. There's stuff that that, for instance, uh, survives around heat vents that you couldn't even get close to. You know. So when you talk about aliens, we've got them right here. Uh, but I, I I always thought it was just an egotistical notion about UFOs because it it. It seemed to say, "Oh, we're so interesting that people seek us out. Other other uh, uh, civilizations would find us interesting, or they want to destroy quite, us." Not quite frankly, they would take one look at the Trump administration, turn around, get in the ship, and go home and never come back. Yes, uh, that Tom. <laughs> I, th I think that the most interesting. Um, well, but if you well, had an alien anthropologist. Well, wait a minute, Tom was talking. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Just quickly, I, the most interesting UFO theory I've ever heard is that they're historians from the future coming back to do research. Oh, okay, that's a they good one. Don't wanna, and, and they don't they don't want to mess up the past, so that so so they disguise themselves as UFOs. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, back to the future. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, uh, Mr. Dubai. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, oh, hello. Say, you wanted to say something. I have a poor network connection. Oh, no. I have a, a poor network connection. <laughs> uh, oh, it sounds, um, it sounds okay. But anyway. Yeah. I, I was saying that uh, anthropologists, yeah. I mean, if you were an alien anthropologist, you know, you might be interested in gathering data mm. from this funny planet not that we're important i mean but look at how many things we study that are probably not that important but we study it a lot uh that that that's true but i mean i just i just don't see why they would want to come here maybe they want tang yeah <laughs> yeah and there you early... remember that show alf yes Hey, you know what, Rob? You know, maybe they do want tang. By the way, I, titties my, and nuts galore. Excuse me, my my underpants are riding up on me. So. <laughs> do you hear that, Alex? Sitting here. What? What? I said I was uh, echoing Rob there. Maybe they do. Maybe the aliens do want tang, titties and nuts galore. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, Tom. 
Since we're on the subject of um, man, I'm getting. Yeah, I'm, I'm so tired. I'm so tired from not having enough sleep last night that I'm loopy. Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> I say since we're, we're we're on the subject of science fiction, um, could I could I break into a uh, to a, an obituary? Oh, we got an obituary, huh? Yeah. Well, it can't be Stan Lee because he died yesterday. Yeah, but, but another science fiction. Uh, Douglas Rain. The voice of Hal. The Hal. voice of Hal yeah. 9000. Yeah. He died this past weekend at, uh, I think he was 90. 90. He was that day. Actually, really? Of uh, uh, Shakespeare and Company up in Canada. Yeah, he was a Canadian actor. A Shakespearean actor. I can't do that, Alex. Well, well, no, That's but, right, Dave. I well, can't I, do that, I Dave. wanted. I years I'm sorry, ago, Dave. Years ago, when I was in New York, I wanted to do an interview with him because I just you know just wanted to have that voice on my air, you know. And uh, he wouldn't do it. He just he he was very shy about doing anything in which he would talk about two thousand one. Interesting. I wonder why. I think he did do the voice one other time, but I'm trying to remember, and I'm thinking, I'm almost thinking it was in a Woody Allen film. I think it might have been in Sleeper that they mm. used his voice. I did my That's, homage to him in that Gabnet promo I did. I did a Gabnet promo uh, making uh, light of the computer Hal. What, you I remember, remember that? Which one was that? Uh, I, 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 I just know I did it. I did, you know, it was around the time I was doing all the game show ones. I did the family feud and I did Hal 9000 and a oh, whole okay. bunch of all right. promos uh, why, when, I, when why, I could think. Why did I put it to sleep? Because it was promoting some show well, we didn't have yeah, anymore? It, it, yeah, it, it, probably the old website address and, you know, so many things. Yeah, I'm just trying to changed. remember which one that was. But then again, don't ask me to even remember my own name right now. So... <laughs> Boy, my underpants are just... <laughs> <laughs> they're riding up your ass. And they're not tidy whities or anything like that. This is a first world problem. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You're feeling yeah. wedgy there, Alex? And... <laughs> FWP, no, I... but that was good, Kevin. But anyway, how, how... I found the article I was looking for. Yeah. We were talking about gun control and shit. The perfect gift. Company giving handguns to each employee as a Christmas bonus. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm shit you not. According to Pittsburgh.ca. You know what I would Football. probably do when they gave me the gun? I would take it and turn it on my boss and shoot him. <laughs> Sounds fair Here, enough. Yeah. Like may happen. Here's your fucking Watch Christmas support. present. This is the gift that keeps on giving, motherfucker. <laughs> At least 15 or 17 times. Yeah, yeah. If you aim it right. Or until the cops come in and kill me. <laughs> Early retirement. Yeah. You, you don't yeah. have to worry about showing up to work the next day. That's night. correct. That's correct. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, anyway, uh, by the way, uh, uh, subpoenas are being in, I issued for apprentice tapes in a Trump lawsuit. Oh, yeah, I heard that. Are they really? Yeah. For his racist rants off air. Uh, Who, who's, uh, who's doing that? The subpoenas have been issued to MGM Holdings and Trump Productions, LLC, demanding... Uh, unaired footage from the NBC reality show The Apprentice from Donald Trump-hosted program. The subpoenas were issued by the Lawyers for Civil Rights, which sued Trump in February, alleging that Trump's decision to end special protection shielding some immigrants from deportation was racially motivated. So I guess this is part of trying to prov prove that he is racially insensitive. Wow. Because, and he knows little John. <laughs> Uh, because he has a little John. Former well, White, White House staffer, uh, fellow reality star uh, Omarosa Manigault Newman, claimed without evidence in a book released in August, uh, Unhinged, that the tape exists of the president using the N word on the reality show's set. And uh, Penn Jillette, I think, has said as well that when he was on The Apprentice, he remembers him saying racially insensitive things. And Penn is not prone to finding things particularly upsetting, but he said it made him feel very uncomfortable. Ooh. God, I'm glad uh, Phil isn't here tonight. 
Oh, oh he'd find a way to make a joke about it. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean it's just it's amazing uh, that uh, that they're, they're, so they're trying to get the I, I, and I think they probably could prevail. I guess his one saving grace is that he's Jewish. Otherwise, he'd find a way to make light of the Holocaust too. I'm talking yeah. about Phil. Yeah, uh, um, much like uh, Ben Shapiro. They they yeah. kept saying that NBC should uh, should give them up, but NBC is not who they're suing. Burnett, right? Uh, it, well, it's MGM uh, Hold. Mark Burnett. It's, it's MGM Holdings Incorporated who owns the show and Trump Productions LLC. Uh, which who knows if that even exists anymore. They'll probably disappear. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, and uh, what what else was happening in the news today? There were some other other little little things happening as well. It's like Michael Avenetti was Avenetti been got, oh, oh. yeah arrested. Yeah. Yeah. He got arrested. arrested for. And it looks like uh, a, a spousal abuse. Yeah. What what would you say? Who said? What, what, who said that? Was that you, uh, Bree? Yeah, yeah, Congress what? is looking at Facebook, and thinking they need regulations. Uh, I would. Oh well, here's the thing. I brought this up last night, and this was becoming an even bigger story today. Is the whole thing about Amazon opening up their headquarters in New York City and in Washington D.C. after they went all around the country, two hundred other cities made proposals to get them to come to their town because they went and said, anybody who's interested, come on, we want to look at your proposals. And somebody pointed out they weren't going to give it to any other city except the one that uh, the head of Amazon lived close to. You know, he has a home in New York City, so you put the headquarters in New York City. He has a home in Washington. You put the home. They were, didn't have any intention of giving these other cities even a chance. Yeah, that's what it seems like. And it seems like they put it near the financial powerhouse and the political powerhouse. And, but yeah, but the, more one, influence. The, the one other thing they brought up, and this is an interesting consideration, was that each of these cities gave them an incredible amount of data about their cities to use yeah. to convince them to come to their cities. So that information is now data they can use. Yep. And yeah, so, and, and Alex, we just had a minister here who said that data, data is the new oil. He said, moving forward, it's data that's really valuable. And those cities gave it up for free, essentially. That's right. And uh, uh, the uh, this a Cortez woman who just became uh, the youngest uh, congresswoman ever. Okay, uh, she. I did not know that. Yeah, Alexandra. She was the youngest ever. I knew she was one of the youngest. I didn't think she was the youngest. She's the ever. youngest. Mm -hmm. The youngest. In fact, she's the, her. she's the youngest woman in Congress. She's twenty nine. The one in New York, or, or yep. I think the she's the, York. I, I think she's the youngest person in Congress, actually. Yeah. Uh, twenty nine. Who's expressing yeah, to us firsthand what the uh, housing crisis is like to people her age, up to and including people around my age. Well, she says simply said, "What are we giving one point two billion dollars?" <laughs> to a company that yeah. has $1.2 billion plus. They have almost a trillion dollars. We're appeasing a left-wing version of the megalomaniacal yeah. Trump. Why are we giving money, again, to a guy, uh, what's his name, Bezos? Yep, Bezos. Who has more, more than enough money himself that he doesn't need $1.2 billion. And we, Our could, real life and we could use that money for infrastructure like improving the, uh, the subways, which are in great disrepair right now, and a lot of other things that we could spend the money on that we're not going to because we're giving them a $1.2 billion <laughs> tax break. And yeah, I know what Phil would say if he was here. Well, but think of all the jobs. Well... They need. I think, they, I, I, I think there's a case to be made for the tax breaks myself. In what respect? Well, because it's going to bring lots of commerce to the area. It's going to bring lots of people to the area. It's going they, to they, keep people working in the area. They say, number one, they don't know where they're going to find the people. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's why New York City is the best. Here, where I live, you couldn't put it because you could barely find enough people to work at Walmart. Yeah, but what you'd find is you, you would find a lot more... Uh, things happening in your area 
that aren't happening now, like more homes being built and so on to take care of people who are going to move there to be able to work for Amazon. But if you can't predict a workforce, you don't want to put your headquarters In other words, here. Well, the <laughs> argument was New York doesn't really need it, okay? But that's not how we, you know, in that's fact, not how business in fact, operates. In fact, the crush that it's going to put on Long Island City is maybe more than it can take. Uh, yeah, but Long, uh, huh? what's it called, Long Island City? Is, yeah. You know, is used to be a big factory yeah. facility yeah. and... and, and 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 that property is is, is billions and 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 it's not being used uh, and this would be oh, a great opportunity oh it, it's being used uh, uh, for instance i think uh, silver cup studios is out there yeah uh one of the, and and there's a lot of it's become very uh chic to live there right yeah. so anyway yes brian practically practically and uh and uh, um politically speaking on a short term sense I agree with Rob in that um, uh, it, if, if, if it's not New York, there were plenty of other people, plenty of other cities, municipalities, and states that are willing to give those tax but breaks. But you don't understand. The point was they weren't going to give them those tax breaks. They weren't going to go to those other cities. They were going to come to New York, come hell well, and high water. Well, Amazon had an agenda and so that they, they so were being paying them, with. We're paying them $1.2 billion to do something they were going to do anyway. Pennsylvania well, you're not really gonna paying pay them anything. You're just not going to tax them. Yeah, Pennsylvania was going to uh, tax break them 4.6, I think, billion dollars in total, just to use an example. It's I a know, race to the bottom. I know Texas is another one that, you know, they have a ton of big companies I'm there sure. in Dallas. I'm sure. Long-term-wise, idealistically speaking, to me, this is an aspect of fascism. It is? Why? 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 Let me explain myself. I say this is an aspect of fascism because we have private mega mega ass corporations like Walmart and uh, Amazon dictating the terms and conditions upon which public policy is dispensed. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. It's an aspect right. of fascism. Therefore, I'm right. right that it is an aspect. Of fascism. Yeah, it is an aspect okay. of fascism. Mm -hmm. But the point is that you know. Uh, it, it, if any company doesn't need $1.2 billion in tax incentives, it's Amazon. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, it, 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 when you've got a guy, Jeff Bezos, who is, I believe, the most wealthy man in the world. I believe you're right. You're 100% right. You're, 100 right, you're giving you're him $1.2 is... billion dollars in tax breaks. Come on, you know. Yeah, but the the one thing you're missing is if New York didn't do it, it was going to be the only other way you'd be able to do that is collusion. If all the states got together and said, none of us are but doing New tax York breaks was going to get yeah. My argument is New York was, was going to get it anyway, because well, the you, argument no was made, the, uh, the argument was made that Bezos was going to pick two cities where he has homes and he yeah. did. And he did. Uh, y yes, Jeff quickly. I'm not sure how long this benefit is going to go because this company may change substantially in the next five years because a lot of products that we think about going to Amazon right now, you can go directly to, you know, if you're buying shoes, you can go right to the shoe Well, menu. Well, no, but more than that, it's only a matter of time before Amazon is split up through uh, antitrust. In fact, other companies have been broken up for being far less pervasive yeah, than Amazon. And give Trump another uh, term in the White House. He's got it out for Bezos. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that I actually like Bezos over Trump because I don't like either of the motherfuckers. <laughs> Marginally better. Yeah, yeah. marginally yeah, better. See your logic. Well, it's like, you know, what would you rather have, cancer or leukemia? You know, come on. <laughs> Uh, anyway, hey, listen, there's our theme uh, just playing in the shot background. Shot in the ass or shot in the balls. Thank you so much, Jeff. Really appreciate it again tonight. Thanks a lot, Alex. You Catch as well, uh, Brian. Good, always good having you here. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Bree, you didn't let me say goodbye. You hung up before we said goodbye. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> yes, he Kevin. He said goodbye to you, though. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Always love having you here. You know that. Same thing with you, Rob. 
And a, uh, uh, a big thank you to Vernon, who didn't say much because we can't see him tonight, but uh, maybe next time. Anyway, hey, why don't all of you give a big wave goodbye so everybody can see what it looks like when you wave goodbye. See them waving goodbye? I will wave back, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Uh, and they're out of, they're out of here. Uh, they're through waving because I just hung up on them. And uh, listen, uh, I'm out of here. But next, over most of this same uh, gab net, is the intersection with uh, Jack Bishop. And then at 1 o'clock this morning, Eastern Time, it is Connections. Tomorrow night, 9.30, the exchange with Damian Chaplin. And I'll be back same time, same station in life. Tomorrow night, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, and until then, if you see her. Tell her I love her, okay? All right. Bye-bye.